Welcome to another separations video. In the last video, I tried to solve a multi-stage absorption problem, but I recognized that I had a repetitive system of equations. So while I could have solved that system of equations algebraically, I determined that there was probably a little bit too much work and that just like in distillation, there's a graphical method that I could use that would greatly simplify how I go about solving systems of many equations with many unknowns. So because the operating line is linear, just to remind you again, that the uh, equilibrium line is of the form y is equal to Henry's law constant divided by pressure times x. This is linear. Remember that the two lines that I drew for distillation are the equilibrium data and the operating line. And it's going to be the same thing for absorption stripping. This is going to be the equilibrium data, which once again, because when we write it like this, we know that y is a linear function of x. We have a slope and we have the intercept, so we can go ahead and plot that. So let's begin the derivation process. Remember that an absorption column is going to look kind of similar to a distillation column. We'll number the stages from top down, just like we did for the distillation column. But instead of one feed and two products, we now have two feeds, that's what I think of it as anyway, and two, we'll call it two inlets, two outlets. All right, we've got a liquid stream from the top at a composition X in. We have a vapor stream from the bottom at composition Y in. We have a liquid stream at the bottom at composition X out. And we have a vapor stream out the top at composition Y out. And we're going to analyze either the top N stages or the bottom N stages of the column. And which one we do will depend on what we have. So in the case of an absorber, I think about what I would typically know for an absorber, just like in all the other separations processes that we have in this class, I'm going to assume that I have both feed streams given to me. And for the absorber, if it doesn't say what the composition of X in is, remember this is what we did in the problems from last time, if it just says you're using solvent, you can usually assume that it's pure. So may have to assume pure product, pure uh, solvent, sorry, pure uh, solvent flow rate L. And that would correspond to X in would be equal to zero. Now, if we're doing an absorption process, remember this is when you, the goal is to clean the gas. So typically in an absorption column, the problem should specify what Y out is going to be. And that is because if you're doing the process, if you're doing an absorption process, then that, that means that you have a gas stream that you want to clean of a certain impurity or something. You should have some idea to what degree you would like to clean that impurity. All right, and before I go ahead and derive these equations, I'm going to just do the same thing for the stripper. So for the stripper, again, I'm going to assume that both feeds are known. But instead of the problem specifying what Y out is, now you typically have a specification for X out because as the engineer, you should have some idea of how pure you want the liquid to be. Okay, so the operating lines are going to be functionally the same, just there's gonna be two different forms of them depending on what is known of the problem. So let's start with the absorber. And if we know the absorber, I'm gonna put a little check mark next to what we know. We know L, X in, V, Y in, V and Y out. Remember, of course, the other assumption is that V is equal to V, L is equal to L, and we can make that for a dilute system. So if the concentration of the solute is much, uh, very small in both phases, then we can assume that V is equal to V, L is equal to L for all the flow rates. All right, so let's um, draw only the top of the column now. We'll call this stream uh, v from stage n plus one. So this will be stage n at the bottom, stage one, dot, dot, dot. This would be L of stage n, x of stage n, y of stage n plus one. And we also have L, x in, and v, y out. We have to keep track of the subscripts for the flow rates. Okay, so a material balance just on this portion of the column. And I'm doing this again to obtain a value of a 
of y of n plus one in terms of x and other known information. I'm choosing to do the top for the absorber because uh, as I said before, you know everything in the top. You know everything that is uh, coming out of the column on this side. So for the absorber, the material balance would go L times Xn plus V times Yn plus one is equal to V times Y out plus L times Xn. Now I'm going to rearrange, get everything on the other side of the equation except for V of Y, or, uh, y of N plus one. So Yn plus one is equal to uh, let's see, L over V times XN plus, and I like to do this, put these in brackets so that I keep track of things. Uh, y out, so the Vs are going to cancel. So I'm taking um, the LXN term over to the other side and then dividing through by V in order to solve for uh, Y of N plus one, minus L over V times X in. And this is the form of the operating line for the absorber absorber operating line. Now, just because an absorber typically has a specification for Y out, it doesn't mean that you will always use this equation for an absorber every time. Say for some odd reason, it could be possible that you have an absorption problem, but you know X out instead of Y out, then you would use the other form of the equation. You would not use this form of the equation. Uh, let's go ahead and, and derive the stripper form of the operating line. So same idea, now I'm gonna do the bottom of the column. This is stage big N, stage little n. So big N is the total number of stages and is just some generic uh, stage from within the column. I'm going to have a liquid at a composition X of N minus one, or you know what, let's call it, let's keep it like that. Uh, it's gonna be this. I'll show you why you might get confused. Same thing that I had with the distillation column, uh, where if I write it in terms of Yn and Xn minus one, you could do the same thing for Y of N plus one and Xn, you'll see. So V, Y, N, and L, X out, V, Y, N. And this is again for a stripper because you assume that you know the bottom bottom uh, four variables as before. So the operating line here, do the material balance V times YN plus uh, L times XN minus one is equal to V times YN plus L times X out. Same thing, take the LX out over to the other side and divide through by V in order to obtain an equation for Y of N. And Y of N is equal to L over V XN minus one plus uh, Y in minus L over V X out. And this is what I was talking about. If don't get confused by the notation here, I can do the same thing where if I just say this is XN, I can say Y of N plus one like that. This is the same equivalent expression. So this one that I just drew there is the stripper operating line. And uh, just like the operating line from distillation, this is a linear equation. So we have a slope of L over V and an intercept in the bracket terms. All right, so let's revisit the problem that we had from last time. I've already graphed the equilibrium data. So I've just copied over the information from last time. Um, I have the equilibrium data. Remember the Henry's law constant for this problem was 0 0.5 and the pressure was one atmosphere. So this is what this line is. This equation for this line is literally y is equal to 0 0.5 times x. And the other thing I'll say, I'll give you a tip for absorption and stripping problems. You have to be very careful about what um, bounds that your axis has. So I try and always make it so that my plot is not too steep or too, um, whatever the opposite, flat would be the opposite of steep. I like to make sure that my um, equilibrium line is at a 45 degree angle. So you notice that my bounds of the X and Y axis are not the same. And that's typically okay. I do that in the name of making sure that my uh, operating line is at a roughly 45 degree angle. 
So that's already plotted. I did that in Excel before the video started. And I've just plugged in the numbers for what I know from the absorber. And I get a benefit here of X in is zero. So this whole term goes away. And I'm left with just 0 0.001 is my Y intercept. So I know that this is going to be a point that is on my operating line. The other thing I know is that I'm constrained that N is equal to three. So I'm gonna do a stage stepping procedure just like last time. And I know that in N equals three, I have to reach the end points of my plot. So I also know that Y in is equal to 0 0.03. And I just had to take a quick break because I realized that I had not had the appropriate bounds on my axis. So another part of the information from the problem that I know is that Y in is equal to 0 0.03. I was 3% in the inlet, and my axis is only going up to 0.012. So I need to go up to at least 0 0.03. Uh, while I was doing that in Excel, I played around a little bit. So maybe you can um, already identify that the problem with this problem still is that I can't plot the operating line unless I know what L the liquid flow rate is. So this would be an example of a uh, design type problem where I've specified what N is, but I don't know what L is, and therefore I have to guess and check. So here in Excel, uh, this is the equation Y of N plus one is equal to L over V X N plus 0 0.001. And I just put in different values of L. So this particular value of L is for 150. Uh, for L is equal to 150. And then what I can do now is solve the equations just by stepping the lines. So for example, on stage one, remember that this was an equation that I had from last time. If I just uh, write stage one, I've got L coming out and I've specified, I've guessed L is equal to 150, by the way. Uh, this is just arbitrary, right? This is a guess and check type problem. So I have to guess L in order to draw the operating line. And then I can check and see if uh, three stages works. But V was specified by the problem to be 100. Uh, oh, I'm drawing this backwards. This is V. V is equal to 100. I just drew the L on the wrong side. So L is 150. Uh, X in is equal to zero. L is equal to 150. Uh, y out is 0 0.001 as specified. And last time I said that X n was going to be in equilibrium with Y out, right? X one is in equilibrium with Y out. Where is Y out on my diagram? It's there. 0 0.001. How do I figure out what's in equilibrium with y out is equal to 0 0.001? Well, I find the coordinate that is on the equilibrium curve. So to solve equation graphically, find the point on the equilibrium curve where y out is equal to 0 0.001. That's going to occur right here. The next step or what I said to do in that video was to calculate what y2 would have been. And y2 is the operating line. So how do I solve that equation? Given what x1 was, knowing that it is in equilibrium, I could read that x coordinate off that, coord off that uh, point if I wanted to. But I could just solve for y2 by drawing a line vertically upward until I hit the equilibrium or the operating line again. After I know what y2 is, so this would be y2. I write it in a different color. Now I can draw a line back to the equilibrium curve. This is my x2. Do one more time. This is y3. And in order to get uh, x out, I have to do one more. So this is stage one, stage two, and stage three. And the fact that my the fact that my y out is actually greater than 0 0.03, or this is where it's supposed to be, 
means that my flow rate is too high. I need to turn that flow rate down a little bit. So if I decrease the flow rate L by a guess and check method, I would then take this orange line and make it a little flatter. Or right, maybe not that flat, but you get the idea where if I make this line flatter and step three times, then I need to end exactly on y out is equal to 0 0.03. By the way, that is the coordinate. So you, you want to start and end on the operating line. So students always get confused when you're doing graphical absorption stripping. Do you start on the equilibrium line or on the operating line? Where do you count the stages? You want to start and stop stepping. Start and stop stepping on the operating line. And that is because the operating line describes the compositions of crossing streams. All right, so at the top and the bottom of the column, I'm going to need to be on the operating line. So stages occur on equilibrium data. And that's what I've shown above. So stage one, stage two, and stage three. Okay, so that's all for this video about graphical absorption stripping processes. Stripping, by the way, is the exact same, just with a different uh, formula for the operating line, but it follows the same exact stage stepping procedure. Uh, one more note before I leave though, for an absorber, you would expect that the operating line, the orange line in this case, is going to be above the equilibrium data, the blue line. If this were a stripper, I would expect that my operating line is below the equilibrium data. You should think about why that is um, as part of like your reflection on this video. So I'll see you in the next video, which is about how to define what the limits of operation are for an absorption and stripping column.